Hi. Um, growing up in Eswatini, which is a largely homogenous country, I had never had to think about blackness, what it means to be African, <laughs> until the age of 17, where I found myself at a high school in South Africa, South Africa, a country which still battles the residual tensions of apartheid. And for my young teenage mind, there were often experiences and encounters that I had that I didn't quite understand what was going on, but I just knew there was something. <laughs> there was something that wasn't okay. Uh, just an interesting example, I remember one of our teachers uh, decided it would be a good idea to have a debate on uh, whether or not apartheid brought more good than harm. And I was just like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know, but this is, this is weird. So I think that experience of, um, for the first time, continuously being exposed to these very weird conversations, and also, you know, in high school, you're from this different country. Some children, you know, would make fun of my country as a joke sometimes, not so much a joke. And, you know, you'd get, I'd get annoyed and I'd always ask myself, where do these perceptions come from? You know, especially when you notice that maybe the, it was a joke, but then, uh, you know, there's a part of this person that kind of sort of maybe believes what they say. And that experience took me on a journey to think about blackness, to think about Africanness, especially even in spaces like Southern Africa, uh, where we were, it was more of a settler type of colonialism as opposed to some other spaces where it was a lot more extraction. And it made me, I think that journey took me to where we are today. Um, I have a set of three poems that I have dedicated to other countries like my own, where we are still seeing some of the impacts of the questions that were raised in my time. What does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be African? So I hope you enjoy. Um, my set is called Poems for the Plantation Nation. The blood of the dove which once sang songs now stains the water in the well. The children drink of the reddened liquid. They thirst for peace. Will their thirst ever be quenched. <laughs> Up on the mountains, bandits stole and slaughtered a lamb, left pieces of its carcass on the valley floor after eating the choice meats. The children devour the leftovers. They hunger for salvation. Will their stomachs ever be filled? <laughs> Will you give me a hand, said the master. The limbs of the children make fertile the soil they toil. How thick the forests grow. The children seek shade beneath the trees in remembrance of being whole. Sacrificed to save a few, will their sacrifice be remembered at all? Will the wind carry their stories further than the boundaries of their family lineages? Will the fires which heard their tales continue to burn? 
Or will they be left with nothing but ash to rub on their faces. The ash is just dirt to the untrained eye. Their home at Dark Continent, will the light reach there tomorrow? The flowers which grow over unmarked graves, will their aroma perfume away the stench of dung-infested countries? Or will the oppression linger, the broken bread fester, the stolen limbs pile higher, and the bloodied water overflow? Children of the Massacre, and Bumalanga, Sihle, Wane. One for the master, one for the dame. One bullet for the little boy who lives down the lane. Dip your fingers into our wounds and smear your door frame. Hopefully, the scourge will pass you by. Pound the streets with determined feet, knead our blood into the pavements. Let our sacrificed bodies sustain you. Our broken flesh, a holy communion. Do this in remembrance, in remembrance of all those that died, in remembrance of the lack of opportunities and the hopes sprawled beside, to say you at least tried to drag the sun back into our skies, for sometimes it seems to refuse to rise. And when darkness falls, Lord, help us all. Well, who knows what lurks behind the shadow? Maybe a soldier, maybe a king, maybe a dictator, a pharaoh, an emperor, or maybe, just maybe, a staff to break open our Red Sea so we can walk on further. Oh, but see how far we have come. A pilgrimage we never thought we would ever walk. To stop the pillage of a kingdom. To see the peace that was promised on this land. The peace that passed us by without understanding. That silence and comfort had long taken hold. How were we to know that we were drowning? Let the shepherd make dry ground of our Red Sea and lead us away from the slavery. In that new kingdom, who will we be? <laughs> I can almost feel the excitement coursing through my veins. A new kingdom, a new hope, a new course to take. A new voice that comes a choice to speak with conviction without being convicted. Oh, I can almost see the hope in the horizon. But walk this desert sand for now. We will get there soon. Yes, the enemy may try to make an example of you, it's true. But don't you see? Freedom for the kingdom awaits. And when we get there, I hope to see you there too. Oh. <laughs> Uh, 
our hearts beat like bongo drums, creating rhythms that ripple across valleys and even oceans blue. This is not like falling in love, but it too is brand new. A new jive and now step where we once wept, so we cry tears of joy, tears in our eyes as sweet as strawberries dunked in cream. As tender as sheer butter, dripping off lips which sing songs of love and unity. <laughs> songs of joy for our motherland, for this Africa that is newly dawning. Our hopes become new every morning. Our feet stop new beats in the soil we once toiled. One stomp and protest, two more in celebration of culture and tradition. The souls of our ancestors are painted in our skin. Black, white, yellow, and olive too. I said black, white, yellow, and olive too. Different levels of melanin clashing and blending into wonderful hues. Swirling into rainbows, reminding you and me to color our thoughts and our African beauty. Oh how beautiful it would be if our steps were ordered by the full intensity of our true African identity. For we are modern Africans after all. The cradle of all human life. Survivors of a colonial past and the curators of a new African story. One that's worth being told with each step and sway led by the drums and strums of heartstrings of those who came before us. Hear our hearts racing, mounting Mount Kilimanjaro before Victoria falling majestically, washing over these supposedly dry bones, which is us. Telling the world that we have been made brand new. Our faces wear a different hue. They smile in yellows and pinks and sunset views. The world better watch out. Look up. Africa is rising and not from nothing. For we are more than just the colonial post which is shackled to our legs. <sighs> but from great stories of old. Like, can you think of the cry of Kwame Nkrumah calling us to unite? Who can forget the military prowess of Queen Jing or of Angola or Queen Labotibeni too? These leaders who led with Africa in mind, whose stories possess the power to transcend time. And I implore you, sit, listen. Understand the stories that we were birthed from. Let them guide your feet lest they stray too far west. Let them make the Africa you see more beautiful and the path you lead more meaningful. Bongo drums, Banbumalanga, Zile. Zwane.